Hello everybody, welcome to week 7 of the art workshop. This is the fourth tutorial in that series. We're going to be doing something a little interesting for this workshop today. We're going to be looking at a couple of things. Um, we're going to be checking out some stuff that I've done. That's why I have the old suitcase here full of, uh, full of stuff and work that I've worked on over the, over the years and continuing to work on now. And we're going to have a drawing exercise. And then also, to top everything off, we're going to be looking into um, a, a couple of things with sketchbooks today, which are very important and you'll understand why as we move forward. So, strap yourself in, grab a pencil and some paper, and let's have some fun. Okay, so as promised, today we're going to be looking at a few books that I've worked on as an illustrator and also as an author. So that combination can be a little tricky at times because when you're working on your own stuff, you have a lot of liberty to do whatever you want and to design whatever you want. But at the same time, you know, if you collaborate with someone, um, it's a little more difficult because it, let's say you're the author and you're trying to convey what you want in the illustrations. Um, Maybe a little difficult, but for you who are working on these as a team, um, the best way to do it is to talk and communicate as much as possible. Now, we talked a little bit this past workshop and the, and the workshop today on your book's cover. And I want to explain why that's important. Now, this is an example of a cover here. Now, all this is is just um, an example sent to me from a uh, printer. And the reason they sent me this is that they want to show me the type of material that they use, okay? Um, this is um, cardstock, very heavy duty cardstock. And um, if you look here, I just thought this was a great example. The cover actually makes up the entire um, front and back, including the spine of the book. This is the cover. So when we say a book cover, a lot of times you think of just the front, right? What you can see, the first thing you can see. But in reality, it, it, a book's cover is, is the entire um, front and back. All the information stored on the cover uh, can vary. Uh, on this one, in, in, for example, we have One Little Train by P.F. Sloan. Now, just as I mentioned in the workshop, if you look close on this um, book cover example, you see a train. So, I'm gathering this is the main character. P.F. Um, uh, Sloan has created this character. It's One Little Train. Um, so there's the train and we have a setting. Remember we talked about setting? So he's shown uh, the setting in here as well. So uh, this is a great example. You have the title of the book, very easily seen. It's very noticeable. It stands out. It's a different color. It's large font. Also, you have um, up here the, the credits, the credits of who created the book, right? Just like a movie credit and cover and, uh, done by Lynn Morgan and then art contributions by John Sloan. So we have a team of people, actually two, an artist and a graphic designer who worked on this particular cover and probably you can guess the inside illustrations. Now this isn't a real book at all. This is just an example of a cover they made up to send out. On the back we have the barcode, as you can see here. That's the barcode for the book. Usually and typically though, it's down in the bottom right. Also, we have the publisher's name. Um, so, all this information is conveyed. And you notice there's artwork on the back of the book, too. Um, it shows a train that is falling off the tracks. Okay? Now, I haven't, this book doesn't exist. I haven't read it. None of us has read it because it doesn't exist. But we can tell just by looking at this back cover that something has happened in this story with this train. Okay, I don't have a lot of time, so I want to move on fairly quickly here. I brought some books that I've worked on too. Uh, this is a lot of copies of this one. I have sometimes uh, um, when I do a book signing, there'll be more copies left over. I bring those home. Sometimes I send them back to the publisher, but in this case, this is Mary Powell Wagner. I got to keep the extras I had. Um, Dance of the Fireflies is the title of this book. Let's look at the cover. Um, I, now, I illustrated this book. And on the cover, we have her name, written by Mary Powell Wagner. Below that, illustrations by Christopher Epling. The title is very, very pronounced in this. I designed all of this specifically for that. You can see it almost looks like it's glowing. I hope that's kind of what you get from it. 
Uh, the reason behind that is it's a book on uh, fireflies, the dance of the fireflies. Fireflies glow. So on the back, this is where we have a synopsis. Remember talking about the synopsis. It's really important. Book synopsis is going to say what the book is about without giving away a lot of detail about the plot or the uh, resolution, conflict, or ending. It may talk a little bit about the conflict, but you don't give away key elements of the plot you know, in the synopsis. If you were to tell everything that that book's about and what happens in that book through the synopsis, what's the point of buying the book, right? So inside of this is the illustrations, of course. So all of these are uh, double spread. That means that they go across two pages in the book. So the book's cover is actually this entire, this entire um, um, area here, including the barcode, the publisher's logo. I need you to uh, focus and think about the logo that we talked about in the workshop. So. Your logo would go here, for instance. Um, notice that I've repeated the title in the same font, smaller on the back, larger on the front. Okay, so these are examples. Here's Salt. This is a this is my book. I wrote and illustrated this. This is a collection of comic strips. Um, it's it's Christian-based comic strips. I'm a Christian. Um, notice there wasn't a whole lot of comic strips for Christians out there. That's what this book is about. Um, it's autobiographical to a sense, but Look at the uh, cover. Salt's at the top. My name's at the bottom. Artwork here. Um, on the back, I threw in some fun stuff for the art on the back of this, but you have the barcode, the publisher lo uh, logo. Uh, I'm sorry, the, the barcode. The publisher logo isn't on this, but um, yeah, it's down at the bottom of the spine there. Okay? All right. Now we have Simon Salamander. This was a book also written by Mary Powell Wagner. This was her first book. Again, look at it. Uh, I did the illustrations for this. I chose to put the title in worms. So these are worms spelling out Simon Salamander. There's a reason for that though. In the story, this little guy, Simon, he eats worms, he loves worms. He's a salamander, that's what they do. So I used worms to show uh, the title. This relates to the story. So when the reader reads the story, they find out that this little guy loves worms in the book. They look at the title, hey, there's worms. It's a connection there. Now you probably wouldn't guess that whenever you look at the title without reading the book. But this adds to the overall, um, as, as a big word here, aesthetics, or the overall impression you get whenever you read a book, it adds to it. Because even after the book, after you finished, you can look at the title and say, I get that now, right? On the book, back of the book, we have the synopsis, okay? Um, this is more of an overview, really. Um, the synopsis here would be one sentence. Remember I told you a synopsis is usually short. And this says, a timeless story about acceptance and friendship. There you go. That's it. Um, you know, so it's, there's a lot of elements to a cover. Um, I have a bunch more that I could show you. This is a holding, uh, I'm sorry, this is the Pirate Ship Bed Trip. This was written by Nancy Quackenbush. N. Jane Quackenbush, I'm sorry, is her full name. Um, and I do the illustrations. Again, we have the main character on the cover. This is about a little boy who dreams he becomes a pirate. So we have him flying off in the pirate ship. We have the title bold on the top. Uh, she included the pictures of us on the back, which was really nice of her. Um, a book's uh, summary or a synopsis to barcode and publisher logo. Okay, I can keep going. This is holding the lot. This is a local author. Amazing book. I love working on this title. Um, Abby G. Combs. She's from Hazard, Perry County. Um, holding the lot. So the main character is here. And then we have uh, the title at the top on the back. We have the barcode publisher logo, a book synopsis, right? Repeating the title too. Now, I'm not asking you to make a back cover to your book. If you want to, you can. That's up to you. But these are elements that we've talked about and we've been talking about. It's really important that you keep in mind, here's another book that I illustrated called Rainbows in the Heart. This was a faith-based book about what rainbows represent in, in scripture. Um, again, it's a church in the background. The title is very bold and big. On the back we have a book synopsis. They're important for promoting, for talking about your book. Uh, these types of things are very important. Okay. Um, another thing that I want to show you here in a second is just how in-depth you can go with designing a book. Um, a lot of us uh, think that you know maybe a book is just a, you know a publisher, an illustrator, an author. Well, that's true to a certain degree, but a publisher thinks about a whole lot of stuff. And as you, um, I'm sorry, you as a uh, a publisher, which you will be, because the goal is for you to set up a small business, you need to know these things and be aware of these things.
Thank you.